Okay. Um, <coughs> first of all, thanks for coming here. Um, my name is Christophe Sautier, and I'm about to tell you about Cloud Kitty, which is a component that my company is starting to develop. Um, we're both here for questions just right here. Sorry, um, my voice is a bit broken. We're both here for questions just right now or just on our booth, which is E3. Myself or Stefan would be happy to help you. So, as I told you, my name is Christophe Sautier. <coughs> I'm the CEO and the founder of Objective Libre. I'm also an open source contributor, and um, I'm sitting at the board and the assistant secretary of the Ubuntu France uh, meetup and association. Objective Libre is a French company specialized in Linux infrastructure. We do staking apps, aud audits, management, trainings. We have a big focus on modern technologies and innovative tools like Puppet and Civil. Uh, we do, of course, a lot and a lot and a lot of OpenStack. Uh, and we have a real commitment to contribution. What, the best example for that is that we are sitting on the top 20 of the OpenStack contributors. So we're here about Cloud Kitty. Cloud Kitty is an additional component for OpenStack that aims to do the chargeback, the pricing, and the rating. It's fully open source. We use the APH, uh, Apache the 2.0 uh, license for that. It's fully written in Python, and it's extremely modular. And I will develop all these things right now. Before in getting a bit uh, further into Cloud Kitty, let's have a look at the current state of chargeback and billing inside OpenStack. Actually, the situation depends a lot. Rig, um, depends a lot on the size and your role and your aims inside your company. If you're a cloud provider, there are many, many chances that you have developed your own solution, usually based on G-billing or something like that. If you're a big company and you want to charge back inside your company, you might have been tempted to use a commercial solution, but uh, that comes with a high cost of prices for sure, but also technical cost because you will be having a new stack which is completely different from the open stack. And for the vast majority of people, you have nothing at all. Of course, Silometer is a great tool. We are using it cl clearly heavily, but Silometer for chargeback and racing is not for that. Actually, it's out of the scope. So why starting such a project? As I told you in the uh, introduction, we are really uh, involved in the development of OpenStack. And we also had two needs that actually came about the same time. The first one was one of our uh, clients who asked us for deployment of OpenStack and told us, OK, I want to be able to charge my users. So I need a solution for that, but I don't want to have an extra, I don't want to have an extra track more than my future OpenStack. OK, so that was one need. The other one was TVT. Maybe some of you know this tool, but maybe you don't. It's a cloud cost analysis uh, services that is um, done also by a French company. And they asked us, OK, can you help us to extend our product to OpenStack? They were currently working with Amazon, of course, with Google, with, uh, with uh, Microsoft Azure, but they, didn't work, they had no solution for OpenStack. So based on these two needs, we said, OK, why don't we give a shot, do a small POC, a small pr proof of concept, and we see how it goes. And actually, the feedback we had in Atlanta, where we showed it to a few people, were really, really good. So we decided to go further with this, and which leads to Cloud Kitty. So our technical choices were full Python. We do all Cloud Kitty in Python. We use a lot of libraries from OpenStack. We use a lot of Oslo, we use some PBR, but we're also following the best practices that we can find in OpenStack. We use Stevedore, PCAN, WSME. Well, actually, we use the same tools and the same components that all the other OpenStack components. We're also really tightly integrated with some OpenStack components. Of course, like I said that before, we use Silometer as a data source. Not the only one, I will come back to that later, but we can use Cilometer as a data source. We also have a UI integrated inside Horizon. I will show you a, a quick video of that later. And uh, so far, we are compatible with iSouth, Juno, and we're about to be compatible with Kilo. Well. If we have a closer look at the architecture that we put in place, well, uh, 
Clock ED is just architecture like all the other open source components. We have an API, which is called Clock ED API. We have a processor, which is called Clock ED processor. We have a report writer, which is Clock ED writer. We have a client, a command line client, which is Clock ED Python client. And we have an integration inside the dashboard, which is called Clock ED dashboard. All these components here are separated uh, separated repos that you can find on GitHub, but also on Stackforge. One of the things that we really have in mind when we decide to develop Cloud Kitty was to be able to be fully modular. I mean, um, we have four levels of modularity inside Cloud Kitty. The first one, and we have a, a small schema for that, is for data sources. Your input which uh, we call later collectors, are completely modular. We can have modulation for all of this. We can have multiple collectors in parallel, but we also have uh, dedicated collectors for various kinds of sources, like, for instance, silometer, but other ones. Then once you have collected your data, you need to process them. So here are the rating policies. And the rating policies are fully modular too. We have a pipeline where we have one rating policy, then another one, then another one. Each of them is, on, is based on is its own module. So we clearly have a huge level of modularity here. And finally, once we have processed the data, we need to be able to give, back, to give the data to you. So we need to have an, airport, an output. So we have, two kind of output. we have two modularity for the output. The first one is for the storage. We can store your, data, your reports on file system for sure, but also on Swift, on Ceph, on the S3 if you want. Oh. And what we are about to, to write to this kind of stuff, to, to this stuff? Well, we're going to write whatever you need, because we also have a modularity here, which, aims that we, which means that we can produce the data that you need on the format that you need. We have a basic format in JSON, but we can produce on the format you need. And of course, all modules are loadable and unloadable on the fly, since, thanks to Steve Doro. Here's the schema I was mentioning. We collect the data. We, we have the multiple backend from which we can take the data. Then we take this data using our collectors. We give the data to the rating pipeline, where we can apply using this module and this module and this module. And finally, once the data have been processed, we said, OK, let's store them using the storage driver in database on the files, and the files will be put wherever we want. As I said at the beginning, Cloud Kit is for chargeback. It's for pricing, for rating. You can call it as you want. But it's not billing at all. Billing is something that each company has already inside the company. So we didn't want to create a new billing system. But we, want to we wanted, since the beginning, to be able to get integrated with these billing solutions. So that's what we did, thanks to the various models we have. And we have an integration of a billing system from the, collect from the collecting of data, which means that we are able to extract from the billing system the rules using the, collecting, the collector modules. But also at the end, once the data have been done, to re-inject that in the billing system, which means that we will be the bridge between OpenStack and the billing system. And since we are the bridge between OpenStack and the billing system, well, a billing system can be replaced by a, cost a cloud cost analysis because so that you can have uh, a representation of your cost. If you don't want to just have, uh, I would say, um, I'm about to say, if you just don't want to charge people, but you also want to be able to have a representation of that, is what you can have using TVT, the tool I mentioned earlier. You see here? This is the representation that has been extracted from Cloud Kitty. I have a small demonstration of how it works. As you can see, okay, let's go this way. Okay, as you can see, it's fully integrated with Horizon. So, 
For starting, we are about to create, using the building thing, which is right here, we are about to create the rating policies. So we are inside the HMAP module, and we said, OK, let's try to make prices and define the, the rating for the compute C service. OK, so what I'm about to price. Let's say I want to do a price based on flavor type. So that's why I said, OK, I want to have something based on flavors. Once it's on flavors, I will have my different entries. So the first one might be M1.nano. OK, the price will be 20 cents. Great. Then I want to have a different price when someone chooses another flavor. Great. It's for M1 Tiny, it will be 30 cents. And the same, w and the same thing goes, away for, goes, goes on for M1.small. It will be 40 cents. But you know that once we have prices for an instance, we can have some modulation to that. We can say by instance, if I am running a Windows instance, it might be 10% more expensive. OK, we can do that too. So I also go to the HMAP module, to the compute one, <coughs> and this thing won't be, this rating policy won't be based on the flavor, but on the image ID. The image ID here, we're about to create one, saying, OK, this image ID here is on Windows 1. So it, won't, it will be 10% more. So I put 1.1 .1 here, and I say it's a rate. So it means that the classical price will be multiplied by 1.1. .1. And this one may be just a little cheaper, so it will be 90% of the price. So I said, also, it's also a rate here. So I created the mappings here, and once it's done, so we have defined the, um, the various policy we have for the rating. So once the policy are defined, let's use it. So our user goes to his uh, horizon here and says, OK, I want to launch an instance. You see here? You have an integration for the price. That will change according to the various choice you do. OK, it's a nano based on the image that we had that was 10% more expensive. It's 20%. The one which is 10% less, eight, it, it's 18. And so on. When I change the type of flavor we, expect, we, are we want to, to change, the price changes accordingly on real time. So the users know what's about to be charged for this service. And when I, I launch it, for sure, everything is collected. OK, I've, co I've changed it. And now, the price I will be charged. Oh, I'm just a little too fast here. All right. And the user can go to, I will just pause the demo here. He can go to his own tenant, go to the billing, say, OK, I want to click to see that. Here is the amount of price that I will be charged for the usage I had since the beginning of the month. We have many other ideas that we have here to do um, a quick calculation to know, OK, if my, my, consum my usage since the beginning of the month, by instance, was this, how much I will pay at the end of the, of the month? That's, of course, just an expectation, but we can have this kind of things that we're about to add to, TV, to Cloud Kitty. That's all I have to say. If you have any questions, you can ask them right now. Uh, please come to our, to our booth. It's uh, just in front of the car, so uh, you, won't you won't be able to miss it. And I'd be more than happy to help you and to answer to your requests, to show you the videos maybe just for a little bit closer so that you can see that directly. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and things like that when you want. No questions. OK, feel free to come to the booth. To the booth. I think it's E3, but I mean, the easy way to spot us is we are just next to the car. Thank you.